Hello, this is Gen Jeff here, and we're back with um, immersive engineering using Turing Complete to plan out circuitry for <sighs> logic circuits in immerse <laughs> from immersive engineering. So I have to rebuild all of this eventually because um, it's currently working, but I want to automate it using all the different logic circuits. And in the past month, because this is actually a rather slow process of designing all the circuits, I have designed several components as we get away from the wind chime. Because it is loud. Okay. So, continuing our project to control this substation automatically, without human input, with immersive engineering circuitry. So, these are some of the components I have designed using Turn Complete to achieve the aim. Uh, first thing we need to do is, um, because the way the volume, the high def, the brain farts, because the way immersive engineering handles power, it takes eight of these things here to fully use and saturate an entire line without burning the lines up. And each one of these things here emits a redstone pulse based on if there's a charge in here or not. Now if we go in here, not that, go in here, we see we have 16-bit to work with. Um, what I've done for what I need to do is I've split it into two 8-bit lines. So one is the output line, so it sends data back, or I guess you could say that's the input line. So there's one, one set of 8 bits that is used to bring data from remote back to the main base to tell us what's going on. And that's going to be left over here. And then the other set of 8 is to send commands back to the substation. So we have two, a double 8-bit channel that I've split, it's a 16-bit, I've split down to two 8-bit channels. But there's interesting things like this, because, um, I suppose it's not really that particularly interesting, I guess. But because I need eight battery banks to do everything, so I can fully saturate these high-voltage lines, I have eight inputs here, which I have to bring down to, well, I've got eight inputs I need to bring down to three. So, to that effect, I have designed this thing. Because generally, the way these battery banks charge is the bottom banks charge first with what's coming in, followed by the second bank, then the third, then the fourth. And that allows me to do a few things as I have to move away from the wind chimes again. Oh god, there's wind chimes on the bridge. Oh god. Are there wind chimes over here? No. No wind chimes over here. There's chickens. And I now have a load of eggs. Fire is fine. I can live with fire. Okay, so mildly annoying. Maybe I can't. There. Problem solved. No more noise. So, this here allows me to do various different combinations of 8 down to 3. These two here are the bottom bank, middle bottom, middle top, and top. And so, once the bottom bank charges, it sends out that signal. The middle bottom charges, it sends out this signal. These two charge, it sends out the third signal. Then these two on the end charge, and it gives me this signal. And from there, I use, I have combined the eight different inputs down to three, and I have a wonderful fun bit right here that I can actually use to contain additional information. Although that's going to come up later on. So yeah. Using paint, uh, we have 16 lines available. Okay, this is going to be fun. 
there's our 16 lines that are available. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the dividing line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This side is um, input from substation. And this is output from base. This line here, these three are now, use a square, we'll just square these. These are now the status of charge for the outputs from the substation. This tells us what the status of charge is for the battery bank that outputs power to the grid. And that is, oh, I can't land on top of this without dying. So this is close we get. That is this line of battery banks right there. These are the line that provide power to the grid, these power lines here. These these uh, power banks, these accumulators here, take power from the grid. And these are going to be put onto these lines. So these lines give us the status of the power banks accepting power from the grid. Now, not all substations will actually have both. This substation actually has both lines. Not all of them do. And then these two lines here that I'm going to highlight with blue, these two will tell us the status, which one is on, which we can tell right here is indicated by these indicators here. The out or in indicators tell us which is set up as, as an input, line 1, 2, or 3. So line 1 is outputting at the moment, and line 2 is inputting. So this is supplying the grid, and this is taking from the grid. Of course, um, the only lines that are energized right now, because the way it's set up, is line 1. So line 2 is getting literally bugger all. That's all it's getting right now, it is absolutely nothing, because it's not energized. So back to Turing Complete here, the nice thing with this component is generally it's predictable how the batteries are going to charge and discharge. So I can actually use this both ways. It charges from the bottom up and discharges from the top down. So I just kind of swap a bunch of wires around, reverse the wires, hook it up backwards, and voila, this component here as it's designed, this fits within the logic block, because there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, not... Screw this, that doesn't exist. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's 8, each logic block can take 10 logic circuit things. So, boom, this can handle both the discharge and charging. So that's what this component does. Now we switch schematic to battery charge reporter switch. And what this does is this changes what input is visible. So which one's going to go out. So we've got this input from one. And then with this, I can turn it on and off. So I've got another switch that will allow me to switch between which battery bank is being displayed on the user interface. Because the user interface with this is very clunky. It isn't really a screen. I've got a bunch of, well, I got a bunch of squares. <laughs> and these are the indicators. I don't have a nice bar graph I can display on a screen. So I'm going to have these squares, like these, these little LED redstone indicators, and this is the UI. So there's going to be a bank that shows the status of charge for the output, and a bank of lines that show the status of charge for the input. So it'll be two parallel columns going vertically. And 
that's how I've, I'm designing this because I don't have much of a screen. In fact, I don't have any screen. In a way, I guess you could say I am making a 8x2 pixel resolution screen. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of funny. So, yeah, that's why that's set up like it is. It's going to be set up so it displays one line at a time. And then using the switcher here, we can swap between which line is being displayed at any one time. And the assembled schematic looks like this. Well, what's the line switcher for? Let me double check what this is doing. Oh, I know what this is doing. That's another switch here that I can use. This is the line switcher. So this is what takes the input from the input string or input line coming from the base going to the substation to determine which things are displayed. I can display four separate lines. There's only three in existence. Um, I can add four. So now this gives me the opportunity to do that. Or if I've got another issue, I can encode information that I couldn't otherwise. So yeah, flexibility, I suppose. And this is what it all looks like when assembled. So I'm going to just put some data in here so it displays stuff. And you can see it's a bit redundant because if it doesn't do, there's some redundancies. If it doesn't load it correctly, then it just actually won't display anything. This one will be empty. Um, this one will be there. This one will be full. Let's just say you're full. Okay. And now you are one of the batteries going in. So I'm just putting random values in here so I can show how this kind of works. Uh, the output is broken because I can't string these together without it causing a short. Unfortunate, but such is life. Uh, <laughs> there's ways I can avoid that in Minecraft because I, I have to make this, I suppose you can call it a gate kind of thing. You'll see it when I make it. Um, so yeah. So now we've got our line switcher here, which switches between four lines, but we've only got three in this case. And the charge reporters for each thing. This is line one, that's output. Line two's, uh, line one's input. Line two's output. Line two's input. Line three's output. And line three's input. Uh, output, yeah. The way it goes. Rehearsed. Professional. Yes. So, by default... I have numbered these backwards. Bottom is actually supposed to be 1. By default, it's supposed to show line 1. Now we add this 1-bit input here, and it's swapped over to line 2. We, put, we shut that off and put this on. It's swapped over to line 3. <laughs> so this is line 1, because I mentioned it backwards. This is line 2. This is line 3. I'm not going back and re-recording that. So, by default, it shows line 1. With this input, it shows line 2. With this input, it shows line 3. And with both, it would show line 4 if line 4 existed, but it doesn't. So I can make line 4 exist. So that accounts for... Oops, that's not what I wanted. That accounts for the red and the yellow. Those two now both report back to the main base once I build it. At least the charge status. Blue here, which is actually not in the schematic yet, will show whether that line, that given line, is inputting to the grid or drawing from the grid. I haven't actually put that into here yet, but it'll be a very similar switch. So, in my confused, rambling way, in 15 minutes, I have roughly described how this works. Um, conveniently using Turing Complete to design it, which is really nice. This is a 
pain in the butt to do with a laptop when you only have a uh, touchpad to draw these lines. So yeah, we have designed a system that supports four lines, not three. Although I really only needed three just because I have two inputs that gives me four different kind of combinations. Um, a system that reports the current status of the substation back to the, to the main base. And then once I design, once I build this, I can get that to work. And then from there, I can design a computer that takes these statuses and runs through the lines to cycle through them, compare them to what I want it to do with what its current status is and automatically manage everything. But first I need to get this working and constructed so I can at least get the data from the substation back to the main base. Now the design is done, next phase is building. Oh god. <laughs> uh, that should be interesting. So yeah. Usual rambling way of doing things, because I don't write scripts, I just do them live. It's more fun that way. See you next time. Hope you're finding this interesting. Hello, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon and all that wonderful fun stuff, because subscribing to YouTube is no longer enough. Hit all the things. Hit the like button. Like the comments. Comment multiple times. And don't forget to share. But subscribe and hit the bell. See you next time. Bye. I think our tank exploded. Whee! There it goes! <laughs> The plane or our tank? The t well, there's a tank flying through the sky.